Hi, welcome back. You're watching Trading Hour. Let's talk about some earnings. PNB Housing uh, Finance stock has slipped after its weak performance. Assets under management are down for the eighth quarter in a row. They've seen a near 15% slip. Loan book has also continued to contract for a ninth quarter. So let's talk about, you know, where things are headed. The MD and CEO, Hardeyal Prasad, joins in. Mr. Prasad, thanks very much for joining in. You know, to begin with, just want to understand where things stand. You know, I mean, why this uh, decline quarter after quarter? Where is business headed? You know, in every business, when you are rebuilding a company and you are rebuilding a portfolio and when it is churning through, it is going through some amount of changes that uh, uh, were decided at some point of time, there is always going to be some changes that are going to come on the portfolio side, on the profitability and everything. The decisions were taken some time back to exit on some of the businesses that were there and that, was result, that would result into certain amount of uh, uh, you know disruptions that would take place. I think we are in a process of rebuilding it, uh, rebuilding the company. I think we are uh, almost over there in terms of the repositioning of the company that we have done it with exit from the corporate book, with the retail focus, uh, affordable housing. I think that's the way forward that we are going to look at it. Uh, eight quarters have been a long time, but uh, uh, it has also been one I should factor in the COVID and other things which have resulted into some of the pains that have con continued for some time. Okay, Mr. Prasad, good morning and thanks for joining us. Uh, in that yeah. case, could you tell us, like Samara was asking, where is it headed? Fine, it's eight quarters of a loss and you're saying that uh, perhaps a lot of this should have been expected because you were rebuilding the business. But how much more of a pain should we expect this kind of 15% decline in AUM to continue for a while? Uh, the, the AUM decline, one has to factor in that uh, when you are exiting a corporate book, and it was a very, very uh, big corporate book, almost about 18,000 crores, Today, we are at 7,000 crores. So you would very easily, one can imagine that uh, when the corporate book is, is running off and we decided to, to exit out of it, so the numbers will come down over there. I think what's more critical is that how did we perform in the nine months? So there is almost a 19% growth in the disbursement that we did. I think that's one thing that there's a silver lining over there. One has to look at it, whether the company had did better in the nine months period with service last year. So in case we continue to do the same job, and I'm sure that the company will do it, we expect that the disbursements will be almost about 17 to 18% this year, more than last year. I think that's one thing which very, very importantly, I think we need to very clearly segregate the retail and the corporate book. And when you look at the retail and the corporate book, it's at that point that we will understand that what exactly is happening. So the repositioning is very clear that, that we'll do retail. And we'll continue to focus on that. Hmm. So you're saying the retail disbursement growth has been 17 to 18 percent, sir. But in the retail segment, the gross NPAs have risen. The gross NPA ratio for the retail side stands at about 5 percent, which is elevated compared to the peers, considering the secure nature of retail assets. Could you talk about the asset quality? The one thing that uh, we are not, uh, I mean, percentage is okay. Uh, I would not like you to take to the percentages for one simple reason that if you have a depleting book, these percentages are not going to look back. You have to look at the exact nature of how much is the NPA. Between September and December, there's no change in the NPA. In fact, there is a very marginal decline that has taken away. It is because of the lower book that you suddenly find that the percentage is very high. Secondly, if you, if you are comparing uh, sequentially, there is a big difference in the way the NPAs are actually. You are not, we are not comparing apples and uh, apples and apples. On 12th December or 12th November, Reserve Bank of India came out with the new instructions, which had very clearly brought in the parity between the NBFC, HFCs, and the banks. That is resulting into very high NPAs that one is seeing almost about 829 crores that we said that we uh, that that we, we declared are only because of the. Reserve Bank of India norms. Out of which 829 crores that we have actually declared, 790 crore is in the stage two. So if you look at it, uh, apples and apples, they're all part of the stage two. But because the, the Reserve Bank of India says that every, every day you have to stamp it, these accounts have become NPA. As we speak today, we have pulled back significant number from, from that book also. So uh, the kind of measures that have been put up in terms of the resolutions, in terms of the availability of the legal machinery, the surface and other things, I think we should do well. I just like to take you back a little bit that why the account, why the NPAs are slightly higher. We always had a very, very high uh, self-employed book. Now that self-employed book, 
self-employed, uh, you know, people borrowing from us. Now, there is, COVID has really hit them hard, the second COVID, which was also one. I think we were very unique in terms of the self-employed. So that's one of the reasons why it is. But I think we're going to come back. We're going to bounce back. The economy is doing well. These people are, are doing well. And as I mentioned to you, so if it's a flat NPA, there is no change with apples and apples. So it's just a matter of time that we will be able to get back with the kind of resolutions, with the kind of forces that right. we have brought. Yeah, Mr. Prasad, taking your point, I uh, just wanted, uh, you know, before we run out of time to understand where do you see your net interest margins uh, stabilizing and do you have any fundraising plans? The fundraising plan are on the table, definitely. We have not announced anything, but we are discussing it uh, very clearly when we came out with the fundraising plan and because of some reasons we had to pull it back. But uh, the investor confidence was strong. Both Carlyle, GA, uh, Carlyle and PNB remain completely committed towards the company in terms of the uh, advantages in the come to the uh, 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 you know the inherent strength that the company has it. So we are uh, it is on the table. We are reviewing everything, and we will come out at the, the, the appropriate time of the capital raise. The capital raise has to take place, but that's also one of the reasons why the business is not able to grow because. Uh, the leverages issues were there, the credit to capital adequacy was there. Now with the corporate book, we have been able to pull back the leverages at 5.6. The capital adequacy is 21.6. Is the time right for actually the growth story to take place? With the depleting book, you will always find that the net interest to income as well uh, will keep on our thing. So uh, now that the portfolio of the corporate book is down to 12%, I think it's, this is the time when actually uh, we will see some green shoots happening on the business side as well as on the interest income that, that, that we are looking at it. All right, Mr. Prasad, we will leave it at that today. Thank you very much for joining us and taking us through your earnings as well as the outlook going forward. The stock is down 5% today. It's seen a 35% slide in the past six months. Uh, but that's the management of PNB Housing Finance. It's time for a short break now.